Trillions, how a band of Wall Street renegades invented the index fund and changed finance forever by Robin Wigglesworth, tells the story of the financial revolution that the index fund brought to investing, reshaping the landscape of Wall Street and the broader global economy. This narrative reveals how a seemingly simple yet transformative idea emerged, flourished, faced challenges, and ultimately prevailed, amassing trillions of dollars in investment and changing the way individuals and institutions approach investing. The genesis of the index fund can be traced to the 1960s and 1970s, an era when the prevailing wisdom favored active management, with highly paid fund managers trying to outperform the market through stock picking and market timing. However, a small group of academics and finance professionals began challenging this notion, equipped with research that suggested most active managers consistently underperformed the broader market over time. Notably, the Efficient Market Hypothesis, EMH, developed by Eugene Fama, posited that stock prices reflected all available information, making it impossible for investors to consistently achieve higher returns than the market average without taking higher risks. One of the earliest proponents of the index fund was John Bogle, the founder of the Vanguard Group, who became one of the most influential figures in the investment world. Bogle recognized that the high costs and fees associated with active management were detrimental to investor returns, and that a passive fund merely tracking the performance of a market index could provide better results for the average investor. In 1976, Vanguard introduced the first index investment trust later the Vanguard 500 Index Fund, which tracked the S&P 500 Index. Initially met with skepticism and derision, dubbed Bogle's Folly by many in the industry, the fund eventually garnered attention and investment as it demonstrated consistent performance with low costs. The evolution of the Index Fund was not without its challenges and detractors. Many within the financial services industry fought against the passive management approach as it threatened their lucrative active management business model. Moreover, the intellectual underpinnings of indexing faced criticism, with some arguing that if too many investors adopted a passive approach, markets would become less efficient and opportunities for outperformance would arise. Despite the concerns, the empirical evidence increasingly supported index funds and advancements in technology and financial engineering further facilitated their adoption. The proliferation of index funds benefited from the advent of the Exchange Traded Fund ETF. The first ETF, the SPDR S&P 500 ETF, SPY, launched in 1993, allowed investors to trade index funds on stock exchanges like ordinary shares. This innovation provided the advantages of index funds with the liquidity and flexibility previously exclusive to individual stocks. The popularity of ETFs skyrocketed, expanding beyond equities to numerous asset classes and strategies. Throughout the book, Wigglesworth delves into the colorful personalities and intellectual battles that shaped the index fund movement. The narrative includes figures like Rex Sinquefield and David Booth, co-founders of Dimensional Fund Advisors, who were early advocates of index investing and built a firm around these principles, and Jack Bogle, who remained a staunch defender of the traditional index fund against increasingly complex financial products. The impact of the rise of index funds on the investment landscape has been profound. Active managers now operate in a world where their fees and performance are constantly evaluated against low-cost index funds. The pressure has led to a focus on cost reduction and performance improvement within the industry. Furthermore, the success of passive investing has sparked a vigorous debate about the implications for financial markets, corporate governance, and the broader economy, with some arguing that it leads to concentration of ownership and potentially less effective oversight of companies. Indexing has also shaped retail investing, providing access to diversified investment opportunities that were previously out of reach for individual investors. This democratization of finance has enabled greater participation in capital markets and the wealth they can generate. However, the shift also means that much of the individual investment decision-making is effectively outsourced to the methodologies behind the construction of indices, which themselves are not immune to biases and issues. 
Wigglesworth's account concludes with reflections on the future of indexing, contemplating the potential challenges and developments ahead. While index funds have grown in popularity, they may not be the final evolution in investing. Innovations like smart beta funds, which blend active and passive elements, factor investing, and the onset of artificial intelligence and machine learning in financial decision-making, suggest a landscape that is continually evolving. In the end, Trillions tells the story of how a radical idea transformed into a ubiquitous financial tool, reorienting Wall Street and empowering investors worldwide. The index fund's trajectory, from fringe theory to dominant investment vehicle, showcases the potential for academic insights to drive profound industry change and the ongoing tension between innovation and the established order within the world of finance. You can listen to the full audiobook for free by following the URL in the description.